In this video, I'll show you how to program your machine, how to make the G code for making such holes, which are called keyholes, with a specialty bit. This is a keyhole bit. I'm going to explain how to program the CNC, how you have to fool it, because it doesn't have a program for such tool bits. And it's quite difficult, even though you make a custom tool bit in FreeCAD, for example, it is pretty difficult to make FreeCAD generate the correct G code for this kind of tool bit. So we will make a little bit of hack. I will show you along this video how to do it, how to correctly position everything and how to get the proper keyhole for your application. The first thing that I need to do, of course, is take the correct measurements for the tool bit that I have. I can either do that by consulting the manufacturer web page or by simply measuring it with a ruler or caliper or whatever you have lying around. In this situation, the tool bit that I have is 6.35 millimeters thick with a diameter of 12.7. The shaft here, the cutting part for the smaller diameter cutting part is 6.35 again one fourth of an inch so i know the dimensions of my tool bit i know what it can do let's install it into the spindle of the cnc let's set the z to zero and we can go onto the computer and set everything up in freecad so it uses an eight millimeter collet i already have it installed in the spindle i will push it almost all the way up be careful not to reach the top of the spindle because it won't be able to tighten it correctly and you will end up with a tool bit that will slide out of the spindle. So push it as much as possible to have better rigidity but don't over push it because you won't be able to tighten it correctly. I will tighten the nut by hand and in the end just another tightening with the wrenches and now everything is okay. Setting the Z value depends a lot on the machine let me show you how I do it. So let's place the probe just below the cutter head. I will clip the other cable here. Try to center it as much as possible. The one thing that I need to take care when setting the Z with this type of probe is the cutter head. If it will go down, it must touch this surface. Otherwise, it simply won't stop and I will have a big problem because it will try to go through the table. And now in the universal G-code sender, I will go here and type $AGE-Z and press enter. As you can see, the cutter head is slowly moving down until it touches the plate. It will go up a little bit and then repeat the process just to make sure the correct position is set. And I know from the settings of the machine of the CNC, I know that the distance it raises from this probe at the end of the measuring is five millimeters i will add that to the 19.5 millimeters of the probe so the z now is 24.5 millimeters so i can unclip the probe i have a z value of 24.5 millimeters let's make sure let's move the z to zero and make sure it touches the table of the cnc and now with Z set to zero, it barely touches the surface. So this is exactly what I want to get. Now I will take the piece of wood that I want to cut and I will measure it to know what I will enter in FreeCAD and how I set up everything to make the keyholes. For this job, I will use this square piece of linden. I will measure it using the square to know what dimensions I enter into FreeCAD as I've told you earlier. So it is 4.5 centimeters with a height of 2.8 centimeters so i'm in FreeCAD 1.0 the official long-term support release i'm in the part design workbench at, as you can see here at the bottom i will create a new body which will be the piece of wood that i've shown you earlier that we are going to mill and in order to define the shape i'm going to create a sketch on the xy plane which will be a top projection of the piece of wood so draw a rectangle Starting from the origin, I will give it a length of 300 millimeters and after pressing tab, a width of 45 millimeters. As you can see, it is fully uh, constrained. I can close the sketch now and make a pad of 28 millimeters. Now that I have the body created, I will draw a keyhole on this face. So select the face, create a new sketch and to draw the keyhole, I'm going to use the slot tool. Just make 
a random slot and we will set the constraints later. One of the constraints that is useful and was automatically added is the horizontal constraint. So I don't need to set any horizontal constraints. Now what I need to set is the distance between these two points. So select them, press L for a horizontal distance constraint and I will set a distance of 35 millimeters. Now select either one of the two arcs, press K then R for a radius constraint and I will set a radius of 6.35 millimeters, press enter. I still have two degrees of freedom as you can see here on the left, which are the horizontal and the vertical positioning. I will select this point, press I for a vertical distance constraint and the distance is going to be 22.5 millimeters, which is half of the stock that I have. Now, after selecting again the point, press L again to set a horizontal distance of 100 millimeters just to make sure it won't collide with a clamp that is going to be somewhere around here. Now that the first part of the keyhole is ready, I will split this into two separate parts. I like it better this way. You could either draw a circle now here and make the pad in just one, uh, make the pocket, sorry, in just one pass but I prefer to make them separate so I will click on close and with this sketch I will create a new pocket of 12 millimeters. As you remember when measuring the, the tool bit it has a 12.7 millimeters active cutting part but I will use only 12 millimeters just to make sure any errors when measuring the stock won't result in the tool bit uh, rubbing against the wood without uh, any cutting part that would lead to heat up and a lot of other problems. So now I will select this face again, create a new sketch, zoom in a little bit. I want here a larger hole. For that I'm going to use the external geometry. It is the easiest way. Select this line here and now I have the center of the circle. That is what I need. I will select the circle tool, make sure the center, the point here is highlighted and draw a circle with a diameter of 12.7 millimeters and you can see that this is not what I want it to be and I made a mistake in the first sketch I will correct it immediately I will close this sketch go to the pocket double click on the sketch and here uh, we set a radius of 6.35 millimeters but that is actually the diameter I will select this constraint here press delete now select the arc again press K then O to set a diameter which is going to be 6.35 millimeters and now everything should be okay our second sketch should be larger but it is not larger because it set a constraint automatically to be equal to the other to the arc so I will delete the circle and uh, draw a new one with a diameter of 12.7 and now the keyhole starts to look as it should click on the close button make a new pocket again 12 millimeters and now I have the outer view of the keyhole exactly as I want but here on the inside it's not represented correctly for that I need another pocket which I will draw on this face so I will select it create a new sketch and again I will use the external geometry tool I will select this circle and this one because what I need are the centers of these two circles so let's say the top view now I will select the slot tool start from this point and it into this point and hover this line everything should be constrained now well it is not as you can see i have four degrees of freedom and this is because the automatical redundant constraints tool of freecad which removes the constraints but it doesn't always remove the ones that we want so let's solve this as you can see i can move it around i can set any radius that i want so select these two points press c for a coincident constraint do the same for these two points now I have a redundant constraint because if I have these two points coincident to the other two points from the external geometry this here the horizontal constraint is necessary so select it press delete and now as you can see the points snap together after that I can select this end of the of the new slot select this line from the external geometry and press E it will make the circles with an equal radius or diameter. Now everything is fully constrained. I have the inside part of the keyhole set up as it should. I can close the sketch and with this sketch make a pocket 
this time I'm going to check the reverse because I want it to go upwards and I want it to be 6.35 millimeters just as the total height of the cutting the outer the larger cutting part of the tool bit as you can see I have the exact representation of the keyhole let me just turn on the transparency for this body just to make sure everything is okay so select the body go to the view tab and here I have transparency I will set it to 50 now you can easily see that the keyhole is exactly as it should be I will change the visibility back again to zero because the model in the job in the cam job is going to be uh, with a transparency I want I don't want to confuse the two of them so setting back the transparency to zero is a good thing now I will select the body go to the cam workbench and click this button which is create a new job click on the ok button make sure the body is selected is checked here in the list click on the ok button and let's set a couple of things up the layout is correct it is exactly how I'm going to set the piece of wood on the machine as you can see it is clamped on both ends and is going along the X of the machine so it's the same here in FreeCAD what I want to do is go to the tools tab and add a proper tool bit here is going to be a little bit tricky I'm not going to use a custom tool bit with a shape that I want it won't work instead I'm going to use a 12.7 end mill uh, tool bit this is the diameter of the outer of the larger part of the keyhole somehow it works it's a kind of a bug but it's the only way you can reliably create a toolpath for the keyhole so let me show you how to do it click on the add button add a 12.7 millimeters end mill if you don't have this end mill check out the video on my channel about creating tool bits with pre-existing shapes with the standard shapes so click on the open button I will give it pretty small speeds uh, 1000 on the horizontal 800 for the plunge on the vertical and the spindle speed of 18,000 rpm and now with the default tool selected click on the remove button now click on the ok to create the job and let's create the tool path to properly mill this keyhole it's not a difficult thing to do if you know exactly what you need to do so first go to the tools go to the tool bit open all the all the containers here and double click on the last object which is the tool bit and here at the diameter I will change 70 12.7 millimeters to 12.68 millimeters this is the most important part that you need to know otherwise this simply won't work now click on the ok button zoom in here select this line of the keyhole the round over at the closed end and the other line holding control of course when selecting them and click on this button to create a profile operation if I click on the apply button you can see that nothing matter nothing happens because I have to change the depth instead of 16.00 millimeters I'm going to click on the formula and write 16.02 you can either write the value to calculate it in your mind or if you want a more reliable and a method that will adapt itself to whatever dimensions you change later click on this formula and add to the variable to the op final depth plus 0 0.02 and type mm from millimeters so it doesn't give an error about uh, mismatching units now press enter click on the apply button again and here is the toolpath that we need one thing that might issue some problems later if I'm making a deeper keyhole or something different is the step down so let me just show you what I'm talking about if I'm going to use a half the tool diameter step down I will have a problem because I will have two passes one at this height one at the final height so the keyhole won't be as it should be instead of this I'm going to change the formula and for a keyhole you always want to plunge all the way in move to the left right or whatever direction you want it to be created then come back and lift the tool bit so the the step down is always going to be the total depth of the cut which is the start depth not not the up start depth but the start depth the one that is set here in the in the th three values 
minus the final depth again not the up final depth but the final depth as you, as you can see there is the 0.02 millimeters difference now press on the apply button and no matter the depth that i set it will always make only one pass if i zoom in really 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 close let me just try to do that you can see that there are actually two passes with a very small difference between them that's why we've set the tool diameter to 12.68 millimeters instead of 12.7 if it had the 12.7 millimeters diameter it wouldn't go all the way in and come back again so that's the important part you need to remember to change the tool diameter to subtract 0.02 millimeters now after clicking on the ok button i have the correct tool path as you can see it will go downwards move to the right come back and then lift the tool bit let's go to the simulator just to make sure press on the play button of course the shape won't be the correct one because the shape of the tool bit is in the correct one but this is what i need to happen i want the tool bit to move to the starting position make a plunge all the way move to the right come back at the same height and then lift the cutter head so let's move on to the cnc and check that this works as it should but before doing that of course i have to export the job so i will close the simulator select the job here press on this button which is post process because i haven't set a file name when creating the job i have to save it now after inspecting the g-code if you want to click on the ok button and you will set a file name here I will use keyhole and see click on the save button and now i can move on to universal g-code sender and do the actual milling so now let's claim this piece of wood to the table i have this line here which represents the zero on the x-axis i will just exceed it a little bit and i will use and i will use two clamps one on each end i'm sure there are a lot of uh, other systems of keeping the workpiece to the table i prefer clamps because the dimensions of the pieces that i work on are very different from one project to the other so the clamps are perfect for adjusting to whatever i need to clamp to the table and now i will home the machine i will set the zero on the x-axis the zero on the y-axis and then i will run the job to see how easy it is to obtain a keyhole using the CNC. So as you can see in just a couple of seconds, I believe it was one or two seconds, I have a perfect keyhole position exactly where I want with the exact depth that I want that's what makes the CNC a great option for such precise uh, milling using of course a custom tool bit but the time it takes to mill it and the way it uh, turns out is perfect this means all the hassle to understand how to trick FreeCAD into making the correct tool pass is worth it i don't know about you but for me when i was making woodworking projects using the traditional tools making such keyholes was quite a struggle because i had to install guides i had to install them perfectly sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't the router would sometimes jam when trying to plunge into the cut so all kinds of problems using the cnc it's just a matter of a couple of minutes setting the job and then the effective runtime of the machine is way less than one minute this was a great thing for me i wanted to share it with you and i wanted to show you how to make the toolpath for such uh, keyholes because it's not that easy but it is also not that difficult you just need to know the little tricks that i showed you in this video i hope they will help you and I hope you'll be able to mill all the key holes that you need as fast as possible. Thank you for watching and see you next time.